But let's not kid ourselves. Even today, marriage is not about equality. It's about perpetuating male privilege. Ah, oh, fuck, another feminist. Oh. Shut the fuck up for the 50th billion time! You're fucking a white male! This is the Booze and Bullshit Show. Shit happens, and we make fun of it. Thanks, Mario, I guess. And today we're going to talk about this lovely bachelorette. And I bet she's beating off guys with a stick. I mean, I wouldn't want her hands on me. Ugh, fuck. Dress it up, subvert it, deny it all you want. Hey, that's what I like to do to all the women in my relationships. Marriage is an institution that has curtailed women's freedom for centuries. Well, then I guess according to you, women don't like freedom because they're always the ones pushing to get into a fucking marriage. Well, I mean, they keep the fucking out. They just really want you to be there to hold them and shit like that. I, I digress. But instead of rejecting the patriarchal and outdated tradition. Look, Tubby, just because you're in your 40s and someone has not proposed to you yet... I mean, that doesn't mean that it's a patriarchal, outdated tradition. It just means that, um, well, look at you. I mean, let's see how many chins I can count. One, two, three, and four. Some feminists have decided to reclaim it. We may have progressed since the Industrial Revolution, where Mary Wollstonecraft described marriage as little more than a state of legal prostitution. Speaking of prostitution, isn't it feminists who's always saying, it's my body, I'll do what I want with it? Well, I guess you would call me a feminist. I mean, it's their body. If they want to rent it out to someone, then why the hell shouldn't they be able to? But I digress. We're kind of off the topic a little bit. So marriage is being prostitution. Yeah, I mean, maybe in the 1800s it was something like that. But today, yeah, no, it's not that. And even this cunt admitted that. So I guess we should just move on. But let's not kid ourselves. Even today, marriage is not about equality. It's about perpetuating male privilege. Uh, it would sure be a privilege to be able to marry someone like you. No. <laughs> so I'm sure you probably haven't been married. Let me just kind of break it down for you. Every relationship is different. So you can put yourself in a position where you are essentially a slave to your husband, or you can be on an equal playing field. And you know what? In this day and age, I think that's more what people are pushing towards. Being given away by your father may seem cute and romantic. It might seem cute and romantic if you weren't indoctrinated into our feminist cult. I, I, I mean, see it for the sexist th stuff that it is, yeah. But it stems from a time when women were seen literally as their fathers and then their husband's property. Hmm, property, huh? You know what? I'll trade you ten goats and four camels for her. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Accept, 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 accept. Ah, the majority of brides still opt for a white gown. Beautiful. It's almost as if people follow social conventions and want to do things traditionally the way their fathers and forefathers and foremothers and form grandmothers, blah, 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 blah. They want to do it the same way because that's tradition and that makes it okay. Like uh, cutting off the tips of kids' penises. But uh, that's a whole other issue. Yes, indeed. But the implication that brides should be virgins is both ludicrous and insulting to women. I have breaking news. Nazi Germany has invaded Poland. Please stay tuned for more on this breaking story. Whoa, so it's not 1939 anymore? I mean, you'd think that the way that she's talking, it would be 1939. But, um, I don't know, I'm looking now and I'm seeing a lot of inventions that shouldn't be around yet. So, uh, yeah. Also... Brides wear white even though they're not a virgin. Oh my goodness, what if somebody finds out? That a female who has had sex is somehow spoilt goods goes against everything feminists claim to stand for. Feminists disagree with 1930s logic? This is a revelation, holy shit. I know feminists who've taken their husband's name because they say it's easier. Eh, yeah, taking a man's name, you just disgust me. Yeah, I mean, that's been tradition, so that's why it's been kind of a staple. But lots of things are done because it's tradition. That doesn't necessarily mean that it's right or wrong. It just means that's the way people have done things, and people are creatures of habits, so yeah. Easier than changing your passport, email address, utilities bills, and bank account details, I suppose. Yeah, it's easier than having two separate last names or doing a hyphen or all this other shit. Because instead of having two people have to change their name into something hyphenated or whatever the fuck it is, one person does it. Typically, it is the woman. I'm not the one who makes this up. This is just the way things have been done because it's tradition. So, 
making it easier, yeah. I mean, it's easier if you have the same last name for all your papers, your documents, doing taxes, and all that shit, you know? You're basically being branded. So anyone who sees your name knows immediately who you belong to. Even if a woman does away with all these traditions. What the fuck got stuck up her cooch? Wait a minute, I think I realized what happened. She was walking in the field one time, and a farmer mistook her for a cow. And, uh, well, I think this is actual footage of her getting branded. Ugh. But no, seriously, attributing marriage to a fucking brand, really? This is just absurd. I mean, words don't even come to mind for how stupid this person is for saying this. It's incomprehensible. Accept it. Marriage can never be a feminist act. Uh, you're saying feminist like it's a good thing. Ah, uh, you kooky feminist, you think you're doing good in the world. Ah, oh, how cute. It has formed the backdrop to women's oppression for centuries, and it continues to do so. Continues to do so? Oh yeah? Prove it. Forced marriage, child brides and polygamy. Alright, fuck, one at a time, slow down. Alright, <laughs> let me hear this list again. Forced marriage, child brides and polygamy. Alright, so forced marriage, child brides and polygamy. Alright, let's go one at a time. Forced marriage, yeah, that's pretty fucked up, but I'd say that's a very different thing than uh, consenting adults wanting to get married. Child brides, uh, well, I'd say that you have two things to attribute that to, pedophiles and also condone in religion. Whether you're Christian, you're Muslim, I know those two particularly do advocate child brides, which really brings light to a lot of those Catholic church incidents. Okay, and with polygamy, yeah, so there's chances of people being abused, but just like any other marriage. Oh, that's right. You're against all marriage. Yeah, that's right. It makes sense. So I wouldn't say polygamy is any different than any other marriage, except that there's more people and it just makes it a little bit more complicated than that. Everyone kind of has to enjoy each other's company and agree to this polygamous lifestyle, which most people do not. So yeah, I I'd say those are the biggest problems involved in it. But yes, there can be shitty polygamists and there could be good ones. So wait, are you trying to associate forced marriage, child brides, and polygamy with regular marriage? Because, uh, I don't know if you know this, they're very different things, which is why they have different names for them. All show how human rights violations of women and girls all too often go hand in hand with marriage. Generalized statements are always true. You know, I didn't start beating my girlfriend until she became my wife, because uh, I know society says that's okay, right? Making such a generalized statement that applies to every single type of marriage out there in your life. Eh, marriage is bad. Just because you get married doesn't mean you're automatically going to start beating the shit out of them or abusing them. Because some people actually have mutual respect for one another. I know no one really respects you, but, I mean, hey, what do you want me to tell you? You can't be a fucking cunt all the time and expect people to respect you. It was not until 1991 that rape in marriage was made a criminal offence in England and Wales. Well, you're safe from that one, huh? You know, if you marry the right person, then you don't even have to worry about shit like that. And yes, I know, things change and you don't exactly know who they really are until later, but there's divorce, there's lots of other options, and yes, it, it shouldn't have been made illegal that late. It should be a lot earlier before that, but what can I say? If that's the case there, yes. I agree. And, today, it's still perfectly legal for a man to rape his wife in 47 countries worldwide. Alright, let's read a couple of these. Afghanistan, Iraq, Iran, Syria, United Emirates. You know what? I heard a story about Dubai. So, this woman, she was raped and she went to the police and she told them, Hey, I was raped. And you know what they did? They put her in jail for having sex out of wedlock because it's illegal to have sex when you're not married. Yeah, these places have some very fucked up laws and yeah, I, I don't think most people condone them unless you live in these fucked up places. But to attribute that to marriage in general, I think it's kind of fucking ridiculous because there's a whole world difference between marriage there and marriage in the United States and in Europe and all these first world countries. It's very different. So to compare these, it's absurd. So if you want to get married, then just get on with it. So if you want to get raped on a daily basis, why don't you just go get married? But please stop pretending that because you're a feminist, it's some kind of subversive statement. I love Snoop Dogg, despite his woman-hating lyrics. Bitches ain't shit but hoes and tricks. Wow, it's like he's talking right to you, Tubby. But I don't pretend that listening to him is a feminist act. 
and women should stop pretending that marriage is anything other than a tool for their own oppression. Or they set up a relationship that benefits both people, you know, like something that's called mutual. Uh, you know, either oppression or mutual, you know, uh, I guess. Anyway, as the late human rights lawyer Paula Ettelbrick said, marriage is a great institution, if you like living in institutions. Well, I would certainly advocate you going to an institution, but... Um... Yeah, not marriage, because uh, I think you need the kind that has padded walls and all that shit, because this shit you're saying is just absolutely absurd and ridiculous, and honestly, I, I'm kind of flabbergasted at a lot of it. Whether you went through a bad divorce and you want to blame all your problems on it being marriage or whatever it is, your bias is clearly transparent, and honestly, it's sickening that people like you even exist in this world. I find it funny how every single feminist seems to have their own little version of what feminism really means. Because she's here telling other women, you know, what you think is feminist, it's not really feminist because I say it's not feminist. It's just an absurd semantics game that these fucking retards play. And honestly, it's ridiculous, so I like to make fun of it, but do the people actually take it seriously? Holy shit. Anyways, this is the Booze and Bullshit Show. Shit happens, and we make fun of it. So, as you may have noticed, there's a new intro for the Booze and Bullshit Show. Let me know in the comments what you thought of it. If you think there's something that I should change or add, let me know in the comments. So, if you like this video, you know what you can do. You can give it a like, you can subscribe for more content, and you can check out some of my older videos. Such as, Listen Up, Lazy Black Person. Also, The Real Truth About Women on YouTube. And, White Person Responds to 24 Questions from Black People on BuzzFeed. You can buy the official Booze and Bullshit t-shirt by clicking on the links down below or on the annotation. The shirt says melt the snowflakes because, quite frankly, that's what we need to do with these precious little snowflakes. We need to hold them up to the light and just melt them so that they go away and we can live our lives in fucking peace.